Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me in this video. Okay, so I am currently standing in front of my bathroom, as you guys can see here, because in this video I want to talk to you guys about bidets. I've been wanting a bidet for a while now. My sister has a really nice total one. Um, when we went to Vietnam, they were pretty much on every toilet that I was able to see. And it's actually very, very common for developed countries around the world to have some sort of um, water cleaning system. So people from the United States are one of the only people from developed countries who do not wash themselves after using the bathroom. And that is kind of strange. And I had never thought about it before until I actually traveled. But with everything going on with the current crisis in the world and toilet paper shortage, I figured it would be good to pick up a bidet just in case we run out of toilet paper or we run low or so that we just don't have to use as much toilet paper so we don't have to worry about not having anything on hand when we really need it. I'm gonna talk to you guys about that in there. So let's go on in. Okay, I never thought I'd be doing a video in one of my bathrooms, but here I am. I figured I'd start off this video by telling you guys what a bidet is, if anyone out there doesn't really know what a bidet is, because I know for a while I really didn't understand the whole concept of a bidet. Um, and then I want to talk about the benefits of a bidet versus toilet paper, and um, then go into the types of bidets out there, and then we're going to go into the installation. Okay, so let's talk about the history of the bidet. It was invented by French furniture makers in the late 1600s, early 1700s, and the word bidet actually translates to pony or small horse. And the reason being is because you are actually supposed to straddle the bidet, kind of like you would when you get on a horse, and that's how you would clean yourself. I thought that was pretty interesting. I had no idea that was what the word bidet actually meant, but you learn something new every day. <laughs> so now let's talk about why bidets are so much more beneficial than toilet paper. So first and foremost, they are much more environmentally friendly than toilet papers, as you guys can imagine. A bidet only takes about an eighth of a gallon of water to uh, do its cleaning, uh, whereas a regular roll of toilet paper takes up to 37 gallons of water just to make that roll. In addition, it takes 1.3 kilowatts of energy and one and a half pounds of wood to make that single roll of toilet paper that you would be using. So that is a lot more resources that would go into a roll of toilet paper versus um, just using water with a bidet. And while we're on the topic of what goes into making toilet paper, there are actually a lot of chemicals that go into making toilet paper as well. So there's a lot more toxins that you're exposing to your body and some really sensitive areas on your body. Now let's talk about the health benefits of using a bidet versus toilet paper. Using toilet paper actually causes friction because of the wiping motion that you use when you're trying to clean yourself. And this motion actually increases the risk of developing hemorrhoids and it's a lot more irritating than just by using water. And for all of my female viewers, the health reason goes a step above because using a bidet or water to clean after using the bathroom actually helps lower the risk of infections such as UTIs and BV. I know it's not the most pleasant topic of conversation, but it's the truth and something that we should know about so we can help reduce those risks as much as possible. And then the most obvious and probably the most important reason why a bidet is preferred to toilet paper is that it's just that much more effective at cleaning than toilet paper is. Now if you think about it, it's like covering yourself in mud and trying to get that mud off with just a dry towel as opposed to taking a shower. If you have like peanut butter on your hand, would you just wipe it off with a paper towel or would you want to wash your hands? Because that paper towel, even though you don't see the particles on your hands anymore, I bet you it's still going to smell like peanut butter. So that's kind of like an analogy that I like to think of when I think of uh, um, using water versus like paper to clean. I feel like when people hear the word bidet, they think of the French bidet where there's a toilet and then there's like another little toilet next to it. That's what I normally think of when I think of bidet because that's what I would see in movies and stuff growing up. So how a traditional bidet works is you would do your business regularly on a toilet and then when you're done, you would 
hop over onto the bidet and clean yourself off that way. So you're not meant to actually do your thing in the bidet itself. You're supposed to do it in the toilet and then hop over the bidet and then clean yourself off that way. Today, the bidet has come such a long ways and you have so many different options when it comes to getting one. That's gonna be the next part of this video. I wanna to talk to you guys about the most common types of bidets and then what is available to you in your price range. As I mentioned, the French bidet is the traditional one, a standalone bidet. It's made out of porcelain or ceramic and it's pretty much just like a second toilet with like a water faucet or like a water uh, feature on it. Personally for me, if that were the only option out there, I probably wouldn't get a bidet. It's a lot more expensive because you have to pay for the actual standalone bidet, you have to pay for the plumbing and the insulation and all of that with that bidet. So it's just very cumbersome, it's a lot of effort for um, that switch in the lifestyle. The second type of bidet I want to talk about is the electronic. This is the type of bidet that is popular in Japan. These are like the uh, creme de la creme of bidets. They are so nice. They like do so much and they're just they're just a very very pleasant experience. A lot of them have seat warmers, they have music to kind of like mask out the sounds and like calm you down while you do your business. They have mist that will deodorize. There's pulsating options to just get really in there. Um, they have dryers so that you can like dry your butt without like toilet paper or anything afterwards. They are just really nice and like even the toilet seat will open up as soon as you go in for you. So they're very automated, they're so so nice, but they do come at a premium price tag. They're very expensive. But if you are in the market and you can spend that money, like those just make that you time so much better. The third type of bidet I want to talk about are bidet attachments. Now these I feel like are getting really really popular here in the United States. I see commercials for them and they're really nice because you can actually buy one and attach it to pretty much most standard toilets in the United States. They connect directly to the water line that's connected to the toilet and there's like a sprayer that comes out and sprays your area. There's like a little control panel thing that is on the side of the toilet that gives you the option to turn it on, the pressure, and if you have a hot water line available connected, you can even adjust the temperature, which is really nice. I also like that the bidet attachments are very fairly priced and affordable. I think they range anywhere from $60 to $150 depending what brand you get and like the options you want. So the bidet attachments are more accessible and you're not going to be breaking the bank to get one. Now the last type of bidet I want to talk about is the one that I got. I actually wanted the bidet attachment. However, because of the current crisis that we're in, they were all sold out. So this is what I was able to find. And this is a handheld bidet. This is what I was able to use when I was in Asia, when I was in Vietnam. And they have it on most toilets there. It's actually very, very accessible because this is going to be the cheapest type of bidet you can get. Like the bidet attachment, this also connects directly to the water line on your toilet. I feel like this is a little bit more versatile. This is actually really nice if you have babies and stuff and you're using reusable diapers. Also, for me, whenever I mop, I always pour the water in my toilet because anywhere else it'll get clogged. And this would be really nice to spray down the bucket just to make sure it's clean. Anyway, now that I've talked your ears off about the benefits and type of bidets out there, I'm gonna try to actually install this it's supposed to be pretty easy so if I can do this I want to say you guys can do this also the first thing I'm gonna do is put down a towel just in case <laughs> okay so the first step is to turn off the water supply which is right here so the second step is to flush the toilet and then hold down the handle to empty the tank Okay, so the next step is to disconnect the flexible water hose from the tank, which is like right underneath it. The one that's connected to the tank, not the one that's connected to the valve. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Next, I'm going to take the T-valve and attach that onto the bottom of the tank and connect that onto the flexible water supply hose or whatever it's called. And now I'm going to reconnect the flexible water supply line to the bottom of the T-valve. So next, I'm supposed to attach 
the hose and sprayer onto the open end of the T-valve. So this comes off, this comes off, and I think this end is going to attach to the sprayer. The hexagonal end connects to the T-valve. So I'm going to grab my sprayer, I'm going to remove the end cap from the sprayer, and then I'm going to remove the blue cap from the hose, and then I'm going to screw the sprayer onto the end of the hose, and then this end I'm going to also remove the cap and connect this onto the open end of the T-valve. So I have the sprayer connected to the T-valve, I have the T-valve connected to the tank and then the flexible water supply hose connected to the bottom of the T-valve. Next up, I'm just going to install my mount so that this has a home. So since this is going to hook onto the top of the toilet tank, um, I'm going to be screwing this onto the mount like this with the screws. And there is the mount. <laughs> so now I'm going to take off the lid to the back of the toilet, grab the mount, hook it on where I want it, which is probably just about there. Put the lid back on. And then now I can take the sprayer and mount it on like that. Okay, so everything should be ready to go. We're just gonna turn back on the water supply valve and see if I did this correctly. Fingers crossed. <laughs> so the water is fully back on. Let's see. Oh, it works! It works, y'all. The valve back to the T-valve, if you turn that off, that cuts the water supply to the hose. And you're supposed to turn that off after every use. Okay, so I guess that is it. The handheld the day is installed. I don't see any leaks. I'm gonna turn the valve on and see if that's causing any leaks or anything, and it's not. So I feel like I did it correctly. <laughs> For now, we'll see how, uh, how it goes. Yeah, let's see if this works again. So I just turned it back on and then you can spray. The pressure is actually really good. And you can adjust the pressure with the uh, button on the sprayer here. So yeah, not too bad, not too bad. I guess that is pretty much it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I hope you found it helpful. <laughs> I am honestly so, so stoked that I was able to install this on my own. I would love to know your thoughts and opinions regarding the days and how you feel about them in the comment section below. Please give this video a like if you guys enjoyed it. And if you haven't done so already, be sure to click on that subscribe button right there so you can see more videos like this. I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye!